Hey everybody, welcome to episode five of our Project Mark V build. On this episode, we're going to be going over intake manifolds. Sorry if there's some extra noise, there's a hurricane outside. Okay, so on this episode, we're actually gonna be going over installing this integrated intake manifold. I'm gonna let Cody give you a little more details about this specific manifold. So this integrated intake manifold is uh, a cast aluminum piece with a larger plenum volume, which helps uh, distribute the airflow better inside. They also build it with nice trumpets cast into it, which gives you a nice smooth airflow down into the individual runners. Uh, they also include ports up here, which you can use for nitrous injection or water meth, which is a lot more common. Uh, and it still includes all the places where you need to connect the factory vacuum lines and whatnot. Um, it is important to note that it is not compatible with runner, runner flaps, so you have to be running a runner flap delete file. And most people that will have this will be running a specific tune for it. Cool. All right. Well, let's get into our install. Okay, so in episode three, we installed this manifold. Uh, we actually have uh, been working with integrated on this project. So uh, we were able to secure ourselves an integrated manifold. So we're gonna remove this one to swap out for the integrated one. Okay, so now we're gonna proceed with swapping all of this stuff in this general vicinity, which would be the rail, uh, the dipstick tube, obviously the bracket, and all of our fuel lines and everything over from the factory manifold to our integrated one. We're obviously not going to be taking this motor with us because we're deleting the intake flap runners and that's what this motor is for. To explain a little bit more about the intake runner flaps, but a lot of people probably haven't actually seen these things in action. So this is your flap motor connected with a little linkage rod through here. And it's basically like little tiny throttle bodies that block off half of the, or more than half of the intake port, which uh, causes the air to tumble and build more turbulence that they mostly use it during the cold start phase to, to help the engines run a little bit better and uh, helps the emission during startup. So our new in integrated intake manifold does not have any provision for the runner flaps. Uh, they are quite restrictive. Even when they're in the fully open position, you can see that they still block off a good portion of the port there. And you can see here, we've got no restriction, free flow, and we'll make more horsepower that way. All right, so we're installing our cover on the intake manifold. We have a gasket installed underneath and we're gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on the bolts for that to get that all sealed in place. So now we're gonna install the intake air temp sensor which is mounted right above the throttle body on our integrated manifold. Now we're gonna put our throttle body in place. Now we're installing our uh, plugs in the ports here for water meth or again, yeah, as Cody mentioned earlier, you can put nitrous in there. Uh, he's actually using blue Loctite on those for two purposes. One, so that they don't back out, obviously for strength, but also for sealing to install uh, them in and make sure you don't have any intake leaks because we are not gonna be using water meth at this time. Okay, so now we're ready to install our fuel rail onto our manifold. Um, it, it just flips on underneath like that. One note, um, all of these had to be filed down to clear because obviously the runners are bigger. And so getting actually installed on here to mount in place took some modification and filing uh, to get that all taken care of. So uh, like a lot of times when you go through uh, a build like this, you will have to kind of modify things to make everything function properly together. All right, now our rail is all mounted in place. We're going to install our RS4 injectors and we have the seals lubed up here to make it easier to get that installed. Now we're going to install our Teflon tape. We're gonna be doing this on all of our mounting uh, hardware that goes into the manifold for vacuum fitting. So this will ensure that we have a good seal against the manifold and don't have any vacuum leaks. Now we're installing these plugs. On this vehicle, we are gonna be using a catch can. So we're installing a plug. If you weren't using a plug, you would use this fitting uh, to attach your PCV lines to this part of the manifold.
All right, so now we're actually getting ready to install our manifold, but before we do so, this fuel pressure sensor has to be relocated. So we're gonna remove that and integrated has this banjo bolt uh, relocation. And so we're gonna thread that in place and then it allows you to have that banjo bolt there and then relocate the sensor here. Okay, since we're not exactly clear exactly what orientation we want this to be in, we're gonna leave it loose for the time being and then snug it up later once we're all ready to uh, have finalized the location of the sensor. All right, now we're getting ready to install our manifold. We are going to be installing all of our injectors into the cylinders first because the Teflon seal that's at the tip of each injector here actually has to be pressed into this pretty good. So we're not gonna be able to do that and show on camera. We're gonna be blocking it most of the time. So basically what you're gonna do is make sure you have your orientation correct on your connectors, which is gonna be towards the back of the engine. And then we're gonna get all of our injectors seated in place. All right, now that our injectors are in, we're actually gonna put our manifold in place. And again, when we originally were doing the install of the manifold, we showed the injectors being installed into the rail earlier, but we found that that made it tough to actually get everything into the head properly. So injectors seem to go in better with the injectors first, then pop the rail onto the injectors. Now we're gonna install our fuel lines. Now, uh, because the manifold is a little bit different, you will have to modify the lines slightly. We did have to bend the lines in this vicinity near the high pressure fuel pump to actually get everything mounted in, in place properly. So we have the banjo boat style. Yours might look a little bit different if you had a uh, bamboo style or the barb fitting that's on the bottom of the high pressure fuel pump. Now we actually are gonna be looking at our EVAP setup. Uh, here we have our NAD valve and this is our check valve assembly. This has to mount to the bottom of the manifold here where we put our 90 previously. Um, we are actually gonna, it actually routes up through the manifold runner here between uh, three and four. And we kind of pull that through. And then this will mount here on this 90. And then there's our mount here on the bolt goes in the bottom of the manifold here, which would mount in place. All right, we just want to, a few notes about this EVAP system. Since we have an integrated valve cover, we have no fitting for this to go on to. We're gonna be doing some custom stuff on this engine for this, but we just wanted to show you that if you had an integrated manifold on a stock valve cover, this uh, top EVAP hose would attach there. Thanks so much for watching episode five of our Project Mark V build. On this episode, we installed our integrated manifold and on the next episode, we're going to be putting a bunch of finishing touches on our FSI engine. Be sure to check out Cody's channel, Black Forest Racing. We'll put a link in the description below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it. You're getting, you're getting judged by Judgy McJudgerson. Yep. That's all I do. All I do is judge.